Japan, March 11, 2011. Emanating 43 miles off the eastern coast of the Oshika Peninsula. One of the largest earthquakes in recorded history, a magnitude 9.0, shakes the earth. The massive movement of two tectonic plates instantly moves the entire Japanese mainland some eight feet, ripping down buildings, setting fires, and killing thousands of people. But the worst is yet to come. The earthquake also triggers enormous tsunamis. Waves as high as 130 feet begin smashing ashore with devastating consequences. One wave in particular struck the Fukushima Daiichi power generating plant and overwhelmed the safety systems, which caused the plant to enter a critical phase and release radioactive material into the atmosphere and into the water. With the nuclear power plant's reactors melting down and radiation seeping into the atmosphere, the authorities evacuate the region. The only people who remain are employees who struggle for days to prevent a larger catastrophe from occurring. But according to eyewitnesses on the scene, these workers were not alone. There were UFO sightings reported in some significant numbers in that area in the weeks and the days leading up to the earthquake and tsunami. And there were a number of UFO sightings reported in the immediate area uh, directly afterward. And this suggests the possibility that extraterrestrials were involved in stabilizing that situation. Because had that Fukushima plant melted down, it would have made a large swath of Asia uninhabitable for a very long time. Is it possible that extraterrestrials became aware of this meltdown and they did something to lessen the impact of this disaster and ultimately save mankind from what could have been a much worse cataclysm. Could extraterrestrials really have been present at the Fukushima meltdown? And might they have helped to prevent it from being an even more catastrophic disaster? Ancient astronaut theorists point out that similar accounts of strange objects seen in the sky were also reported 25 years earlier during the meltdown at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine. A number of witnesses reported that there were UFOs hovering around the power station. And that even beams of light were coming down from these UFOs and doing something to the nuclear power plants and keeping them from having a much worse meltdown than the, they did have. Some have speculated that the UFOs that were seen during the crisis may have been perhaps protecting us, trying to stave off a horrifying nuclear explosion, or if not protecting us, at least protecting our world. Was it simply good fortune that the nuclear accidents at Fukushima and Chernobyl weren't far more deadly? Or is it possible that the UFOs eyewitnesses spotted were responsible for averting these catastrophes when humans were powerless to do so. Ancient astronaut theorists believe these encounters weren't random occurrences, but part of an extraterrestrial agenda that has been in place on Earth for thousands of years. It appears that there is an ongoing plan in place, a hidden hand in history that is manipulating events that we are interacting with alien civilization and that we are experiencing the fruits of what they are offering us because our history is being intelligently guided and directed to steer us towards a particular outcome. But if alleged alien encounters really are evidence that extraterrestrials are intervening in human affairs, what is their purpose? While the United States officially denied investigating UAPs until 2017, some nations 
had always been ahead in their approach to the subject. Leading the world in UAP research is the South American country of Chile. In 1997, the Chilean government officially instructed air traffic control and military personnel to create the Committee for the Study of Anomalous Aerial Phenomena. The committee studies all reports of UAP activity by commercial, military, and civilian pilots. One of the most well-publicized was a shocking incident that occurred in 2014, when Chilean naval officers flying along the coast of Santiago captured video of a UAP. There was an incident in 2014 where a military helicopter got video of a strange object. It kind of looked like a rocket with some sort of plume behind it. And they said they were at about 4,500 feet. They have nine minutes of fairly clear video that exists on this. The Chilean military studied it for two years, and they were not able to identify this at all. Chile like many other South American countries, seem to be far more open to the idea that there are objects coming into our airspace. I think one of the reasons why South American countries are more open-minded about the UFO and the extraterrestrial question is because it is part of their cultural heritage. In fact, Peru and Bolivia, their treasure troves for the ancient astronaut theory. The whole pre-Inca culture and even the Inca culture spoke of these beings of light that descended from the sky. And so these countries essentially grew up with this intrinsic knowledge of someone up in the sky. In addition to South America, now other parts of the world, are also starting to disclose information about UFOs. Governments are openly investigating encounters reported by both civilians and military personnel. But many researchers believe the most noteworthy country to join this international effort is also one of the most skeptical, Japan. In 2018, the Japanese government released an official statement denying the existence of UFOs. The Japanese government made a sudden press release that said they would not recognize any UFO encounters or extraterrestrial presence on Earth or in the airspace of Japan. I thought this was very strange as we had already interviewed two pilots uh, who had several is incidents and uh, testimonies that they gave us regarding various pilots' encounters in the air and from the ground over the years when they were active in the military. Mamoru Sato, a former wing commander in the Japanese Self-Defense Force, said that he regularly heard stories from other pilots as well as civilians about UAP sightings. Some people said, there's something strange out there. There were a lot of opportunities to see inexplicable things, such as UFOs, that were monitoring the sky and training in the sky. And it was my subjective view that we should make a report and organize these things as correct data. But even when this happened, it was only shared among colleagues and not reported publicly. According to Sato, numerous pilots have reported highly unusual encounters with what they described as cigar-shaped objects. During one such incident, a student in his fighter pilot course even lost control of his craft. He said, the aircraft started going crazy. The alarm rang to indicate that something was wrong with the machine. I saw a cigar-shaped object flying about 1,500 meters high from east to west. The anomaly continued until it disappeared. For years, pilots in the Japanese military were instructed to remain silent about such incidents. But in September 2020, Japan's decades-long policy of secrecy and denial came to an end. When Defense Minister Taro Kono tasked the Japanese Self-Defense Forces to make a visual recording of any encounter with an unexplained craft, many believe this very public shift in policy was prompted by a meeting held one month earlier between Minister Kono and his U.S. counterpart. Defense Secretary 
Mark Esper. That's a major development, I think, when you have close allies like the U.S. and Japan openly speaking about the UFO issue and agreeing to cooperate. We've come so far in such a short amount of time. The fact that Japan denied that there was UFO activity happening in their country, and now they're establishing the Japanese Space Operations Squadron, says to me that there clearly is something going on over the skies of Japan. Ancient astronaut theorists suggest governments throughout the world are finally beginning to acknowledge that there may be objects in our skies that are not of this Earth. Ancient astronaut theorists suggest evidence of alien contact on these islands dates back thousands of years and can be found within the teachings of Shintoism. Shintoism is the primary religion of Japan with over 107 million followers and is designed around a set of ritual practices that connect present-day Japan to its ancient mystical past. At its center are celestial beings that, according to the Japanese people, still roam their islands to this day. The term Shinto translates as the way of the kami or uh, the way of the gods. It's a tradition that has a millennia-long history in Japan. There are over 8 million kamis, according to the Shinto tradition, and each one of them has its own particular personality traits, if you will. So in that sense, they are quite different from the notion of monotheistic god that we have in traditions that are most widespread in the West. The kami are these celestial beings that are able to inhabit basically anything, from a human being to an animal, and even inanimate objects. So on the one hand, there are these multi-dimensional beings, but then they also describe them as having come down from their celestial palace in the sky, which is called Takamagahara. The celestial kami will come into the terrestrial world, our world, and they need a home. So they have these major shrines for these kami when they come into the world so that they can feel at home in the terrestrial world. The Japanese archipelago is dotted with over 81,000 shrines that are devoted to the kami gods. And it's believed that these are houses or places where these extraterrestrial beings come to live when they're on Earth. The Japanese people will visit the shrines of the kami with the belief that they are actually praying to an extraterrestrial being who can fulfill their blessings. If what Shinto followers call the kami, really are otherworldly beings that have been visiting Japan since ancient times. Are they still being encountered today in the form of UFOs?